LinkedIn announced a new way for you to target members on their platform. They're called predictive audiences, and they utilize your current remarketing lists to put together a new smart audience that behaves similar to that remarketing list. Now, that sounds similar to something else, maybe a lookalike audience, you're probably on the same page that I am. So in this video, what I wanna do is walk through what predictive audiences are, show you how to set them up, and then try to identify the differences between lookalikes, audience expansion, and predictive audiences. This Paid Media Pros video is sponsored by Optio, the smarter, more efficient way to manage Google Ads. Optio's platform operates as a second pair of eyes on your accounts, regularly monitoring performance trends to make data-driven optimization suggestions for keyword strategies, bid optimizations, ad copy creation, and more. Better yet, you can save time by implementing their suggested changes directly in their user-friendly interface. Optio is extending their free trial period for Paid Media Pros viewers for 60 days, meaning you get two full months of testing and using Optio on your accounts before you pay a dime. If you're interested in giving it a shot, click the link on the screen right now or in the video description to get started. Let's start off this video with that last part, trying to figure out what exactly the differences are between audience expansion, lookalikes, and the newest offering predictive audiences. I'm in this help section, which is going to, you know, help us out a little bit. I want to start out with the most basic one, and that's audience expansion. You're probably pretty familiar with this as it is a checkbox during the campaign setup. So if we hop into an account real quick. I'm in just a placeholder campaign. If we scroll down a bit into who is your target audience, this section, audience expansion is going to be this checkbox right here. As you can see, LinkedIn likes it when it's on and when it's off. They're not a huge fan because you're missing out on estimated impressions and a potentially lower cost on those impressions. The way audience expansion works is that it shows your ads to audience members who have similar attributes to your target audience. You can use them in combination with matched audiences, but the biggest piece is that they recommend using audience expansion when specific types of targeting might be limiting. So think about job titles or skills or groups. There's a finite number of those available on LinkedIn, but job titles, for example, you can come up with any goofy job title nowadays. LinkedIn tries to group all of those together in those checkbox segments that we get when we're building our campaign, but some are going to be missed. With audience expansion, the goal is to try and help you capture those additional job titles that didn't fit into those specific buckets, but that would still be a good option for you to target based on the job titles you are targeting. So that's the first option. Lookalike audiences are a little bit more advanced. These utilize your matched audience segments, either website audiences, lead gen forms, video ad audiences, company or contact lists, analyze those users, and then put together a new audience of users who are similar to those in that matched audience that you provided. We have a full video on LinkedIn lookalike audiences that you can check out at the top of the screen right now, but effectively, you're just creating an audience that is similar to the one that you provided, regardless of the source, in an effort to help you reach new audience members without having to use the specific individual targeting options within the LinkedIn platform. Now, predictive audiences are going to be pretty similar to lookalikes, to be honest, but they are just a touch different. So if we scroll all the way up here, first, I want you to note that predictive audiences are gradually rolling out. They are not available in all accounts. They're probably in about half of our accounts as of the recording of this video. And strangely enough, they're actually eligible in the smaller accounts on a higher percentage than they are the larger accounts based on ad spend. In a minute, I'll show you where we can create predictive audiences, but if you're not seeing them in your account just yet, just be patient, they'll be coming to you soon. So what predictive audiences are is again, like lookalikes, it helps you expand your campaign's reach by finding people with similar characteristics to your existing data source. But the difference is this little language right here. They are trying to find users who are more likely to convert. Neither audience expansion nor lookalike audiences talk about the likeliness to convert. The other portion is that for predictive audiences, what they do is combine your data source and LinkedIn's AI. So there is some machine learning in there. My guess is that's how they're trying to find the users who are more likely to convert. Again, the similarities with lookalike audiences are that they are based on either contact lists, lead gen forms, or online conversions. So there's no video ad piece. There's no company target list. 
but you do have the ability to adjust your audience by location and by size, which will feel similar to Facebook's lookalike audiences and not quite the same as LinkedIn's. So with that, let's go ahead, jump into a live client account, build out a predictive audience to show you what the process looks like. We will then apply it to a campaign and talk about some of the last limitations and best practices for predictive audiences based on LinkedIn's current suggestions. So as I said, we're in a live client account, which is unfortunately why a lot of this is blurred out. But to get to the audience manager, we just need to go to plan and then audiences. And then to create a new audience, we need to come to create audience. And then predictive will be all the way down here under create, just above lookalike. If it's not listed there, you don't have access yet. I'm gonna click predictive. And the first thing we can do is give our audience a name. You next get to choose the source that you want to create your audience from. So if you choose the drop down, you have the three options that we mentioned from the help article. You can either use a contact list, again, not a company list, but a contact list, an audience based on conversion or lead gen form. Let's just take a quick look at what each of these looks like. So we'll start with contact list. Weirdly enough, this account for as many audiences that it has does not have any contact lists available, but you will see down here at the bottom to build an audience from a contact list, you must have an active contact list with at least 300 members. My guess is that's the problem with this one. All of the contact lists are under 300 members. Next is going to be the conversion source. These are going to be based on the conversion actions you have set up in your LinkedIn account. Obviously one of these is just a page view as a conversion, which we may or may not want to use for this, but we do have another one that's a lead. And the nice thing about predictive audiences is that you don't have to choose just one type of conversion action or contact list or lead gen form, you can choose multiple. So if I were to create this audience right now, it would create a predictive list of users who based on LinkedIn's AI, are more likely to convert on our website and have similar attributes to the users who have completed this page view and who have submitted this form to be a lead in the account. For now, I'm gonna remove this. I wanna look at the last audience type, which is lead gen form. This will feel very similar to the conversion action setup. You can choose as many lead forms as you want. And the great part is you can find the audience count to make sure that total you add up to more than 300 members. If you have lots of different lead forms like this account does, you can use the search function to narrow down on specific lead gen forms. So if you wanna focus on people who downloaded white papers versus those who signed up for a newsletter, you can segment your predictive audiences however you'd like. For now, I'm just gonna create a very basic predictive list because I'm gonna scroll down here, choose this specific LinkedIn form that has 600 members. And then the next thing we get to do is choose the audience size and location. By default, it's setting me up for the United States, but you can add different locations and they do have the option to start at the country level. But seeing as I'm located in Indianapolis in Indiana, have the benefit of having the same first few letters to start off the word. And that allows us to see this. We can see that you can target a state, which is Indiana. You can target the city of Indianapolis in Indiana, or you can target greater Indianapolis, which is effectively Indianapolis and all of its surrounding suburbs kind of the metro area. You can also target specific counties that are popping up. So whichever your targeting option and however specific you wanna be with your location, you can get pretty specific with predictive audiences. For now, I'm gonna leave it as United States. And then if we scroll down, again, we get the option to select the size of the audience, very similar to what we used for Facebook lookalike audiences. The thing to note here is the maximum size for a predictive audiences is limited to 10% of the total member population of your selected location or 50 million users, whichever is lower. So in the United States, we have upwards of 22 million people available on the LinkedIn network. So the maximum size we're allowed to have is 2.2 million people because that's 10%. Now, if I were to add in additional countries and expand my reach, I could have the audience size be higher, but that's just the maximum size. The minimum audience is going to be 300 members down here at the bottom. And you can drag this over if you want your audience to be smaller. So if you wanna focus on just the lowest 500,000 users, just about close enough, you can do that. You can use the toggle as much as you want, the only limitation is going to be making sure that your audience is big enough to target, but not so large that it's over the 10% or 50 million users. So with that, let's go ahead and click agree and create. And although this audience says that it's building and it will start working on things, based on LinkedIn's own help articles, it is now eligible to be used in campaigns. So let's go create a basic placeholder account and I'll show you where this would show up. 
I skipped ahead a bunch of steps. I already have a placeholder campaign set up. So I'm gonna scroll down into the target audience section. And just like we would do for company, contact, or lookalike audience, we would need to use the audiences section. You'll see here that at a high level, predictive is one of the options. So we would just need to click on this. Now check the box next to our predictive example, and we're able to add it to the campaign. Now, as I mentioned, it's still building. It's not quite ready to serve just yet, but it should be available within the next 24, 48, 72 hours, something like that. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about are some of LinkedIn's suggested best practices with predictive audiences. So as I say here, if you choose a contact list, it must have a minimum of 300 rows and maximum of 300,000 rows. Third-party and data integration contact lists cannot be used as a data source. So for now, it would have to be a manual contact list upload. My guess is since they have right now in that sentence, that means that over time, you will be able to utilize third-party and data integration lists, just not quite yet. They have the same audience size caveat for online conversion and lead gen forms, has to be at least 300 members. And then these last three things I think are pretty important, two of them more so important. The first that is definitely important, there's a limit of five predictive audiences for each ad account. So definitely take advantage and test out predictive audiences in your account, but be strategic. You can only have five at any point in time. So make sure that you're using the ones that are gonna have the highest impact and not just creating them just for fun. Predictive audiences can't be shared across ad accounts. So if you have a business that runs multiple different brands and you wanna be able to cross an upsell based on online conversions and lead gen forms, you're gonna to have to do that with something other than predictive audiences. An easy way around that would just be to upload the manual contact list, but obviously that takes a few more steps. And then lastly, audience expansion is disabled for campaigns that use predictive audiences. My guess is that they're just assuming They've got all the machine learning they need in there, so audience expansion really isn't of any use. Overall, predictive audiences on LinkedIn feel pretty similar to lookalikes, but it seems like their intent is for them to be more leaning into the conversion actions rather than just finding similar audiences around the network. As of the release of this video, we have not tested the predictive audience segments in any of our accounts just yet, but I would love to hear about any of the experiences that you've had if you've tested them, any benefits, any drawbacks, or any suggestions you have for anybody else. But just like always, if you have any questions about predictive audiences or anything else on the LinkedIn ads platform, we'd love to hear about it in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.